Welcome to the third video in our quadcopter building for beginners series two. Now in the last video what we did is we did a couple of things. We made sure that the motors and the ESCs were going to work. We kind of put the frame together and tested that everything was going to fit or where the challenges were going to be. And we also plugged in our little flight controller into the computer to make sure it was all working. Now in this video we're going to spend a lot more time actually putting the power system together. So in this we're going to look at really three things. The first is I figured out how we're going to mount the power distribution board and the flight controller stack in the middle to give us the maximum amount of space. So we'll look at that. Then we'll actually have a look at how we're going to put the motors on the arms itself and also then how we're going to fit the ESCs into position because there is not a lot of room in here at all which is again I'll reiterate this is definitely not a quadcopter that I'd suggest for a very first time build. Uh, series 1 where we actually did a much more conventional build is a little bit easier because there's a little bit more room. With this one we're going to have to again be a little bit innovative with the ESCs and we're actually going to end up using things like BL Heli to reverse the ESCs if the motors are going in the wrong direction and I guarantee that two of them will be. Then once we've got all that done then we'll start wiring up the main power connection and also wiring up the main power leads onto the power distribution board itself and then once that's all finished we'll put leads in place for both the 5 volts and the 12 volts as well. The 5 volts that we're going to need to power the flight controller because these are opto speed controllers and won't provide the 5 volts that we need. And then finally at the end what we'll do is we'll plug a main battery in to make sure there's no magic smoke and also to just double check that there is 5 volts here and there is 12 volts here and then at that point we'll be ready for the next video where we're going to look at signals. So the first thing we'll talk about is how we're actually mounting these boards. Hopefully you can see there, there is a little gap underneath. Now what I've done here, uh, rather than just mount the power distribution board directly on this aluminium anodized cross piece, I've actually popped some little M3 nylon washers underneath just to lift it off slightly so that I'll be confident that there's absolutely no chance of there being a short from the bottom of the PDB. Now the way it's supplied here is it looks like in the kit as you get it you're supposed to put it together by putting one lot of these little black nylon nuts underneath the power distribution board then the riser then the flight controller and then the other set of nuts on top. But I'm going to do something slightly different. What I'm doing here is I'm actually putting the very bottom those little washers so that the power distribution board is as low as I can possibly get it. Then I'm putting the risers on top of the power distribution board. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. And then what I'm doing is I'm actually screwing on top one of the black nuts that we're getting here. Now, unfortunately in my kit one thing I did find, which you might have noticed watching the video back, is one of my risers was actually the wrong size. Let me just see if it's going to focus on that. There it is. It was shorter than all the others. So what I've ended up doing is actually putting two of those M3 washers underneath. So it's the same height. Not particularly good quality control, but uh, not a disaster. So now we've done that, once we put the flight controller on the top, you can see we have almost enough room to do what we need to do. If I bring in our little top plate and pop that on, you can see that with the direct soldering that we're going to do will make it happen. But there's more than enough room in here now to get the power wires in from both the, the main flight battery but also all of the power wires from each of the individual ESCs. So if you're going to build one of these, have a look and really think about how you're going to mount this. Uh, this power distribution board isn't well laid out at all. I'm not a massive fan of this um, because all of the connections for the positive are on this side. All of the connections for the negative are on this side. So it means that we're going to have to have cables rather than have a positive and negative pad presented at each corner, which some better designed ones do. We're going to have to kind of run cables around so that the, the negative can go onto one of those pads and then we have to run the positive all the way across to the other side and we have to do that for every single corner which is another reason why it's going to get a bit messy in there and we're going to have to mount the flight controller a bit higher. Hopefully uh, for kits in future they'll change this power distribution board out for one that's a little bit nicer. 
Okay, so the next thing we need to do then is start installing the motors. Now, the motors in the kit, uh, you tend to get two different versions here. We have these Emacs multi-copter motors. These multi-copter motors come in clockwise and counterclockwise direction. If you actually look on top of the motor, you'll see that there is an arrow. So this one is designed to go that way round. And if we pop the model down and insert the graphic that we had originally, if I'm saying that this is the front of the model, then if we look at the graphic up here, then we know that this one has to turn in counterclockwise, this one has to be clockwise, this one has to be clockwise, and this one has to be counterclockwise. So what we need to do is as we take the motors out, we just need to see which way they're rotating and pop them on the arm that we need to. Now we're uh, just securing them with the four screws in these motors when you open them. And one of the reasons why I really, really like these is they give you loads and loads of screws of different length. And we are using the slightly longer screws in here because there is a bit of, uh, of material to get through. These arms are lovely and thick and you want it like kind of three, four millimeters proud to be nicely firm into the can. Make sure that when you've put the screws in that there isn't any catching and the motors are nice and smooth. So what I'm going to do in a minute is I'll stop the video and I'll put all those four motors on. The other challenge that we have here, and again, this is part of the fun of building such a compact frame, is that in the other video, what we did is we just connected these two wires together and we kind of popped the ESC onto the arm. Now doing it that way means that if the motor is turning the wrong way, then you just swap any two of the three leads between the ESC and the motor and it will change the direction. We haven't got that room here. If I put the ESC onto the arm, there is just enough room for everything to fit. What we're going to have to do here is I'm going to have to unsolder these cables from this ESC. I'm going to have to just slit and pull back this uh, heat shrink. And then what I'm going to have to do is cut the wires on the motor so that they're just long enough to directly solder the motor wires onto the ESC. Now there's a couple of little challenges with that. The first is that some of these wires may have a little bit of lacquer because the wires inside the motor, I'm not sure if the camera's going to pick it up, you'll see them like that coppery colour. That coppery colour is the lacquer that is around each individual strand and it's designed to be electrically isolating. Sometimes you'll find that if you cut the wires very close to a motor, some of that lacquer is, is on the wires. So you have to use, the way I tend to do it is just put a blob of solder onto a hot soldering iron and just hold it over the wires to make sure that they tin properly and that lacquer is burnt off. So what we're gonna to have to do here is I'm going to have to mount all of the motors and then I'm going to have to undo some of this heat shrink and then directly solder each of the three wires from the motor onto these three lovely pads on the ESC. The other challenge of course is then that's going to make it very difficult if we subsequently find that the motors are turning the wrong way round to swap any two of these three wires to change the direction. So in that case we're going to have to rely on the power of BL Heli. These luckily little little B Opto ESCs that we're using are BL Heli ESCs. What we'll have to do is later on when we're checking everything out, if any of these are reversed, then we're going to have to go into the software onto these ESCs. And don't worry, it's not too difficult. We ended up doing it in the troubleshooting video in the last series that we did, and we're going to have to reverse them in software. So those are the two challenges that we have here on this model. One, it's so super tight, we're going to have to directly solder the motor wires onto the ESC. We're going to have to be a bit careful of things like lacquer and making sure that we have enough room and we get some really nice contacts. Second, we have no option then but to use software to reverse them. So let me pause the video there. Let me go and uh, put the motors on each of the arms and do that soldering job. I'll probably then uh, pop a little bit of heat shrink between the motor and the ESC just to make sure that those exposed contacts are covered. And then we'll come back and then we'll have a look at how we're going to connect it all to the power distribution board and also take care of the 5 volts and the 12 volts. So. See you in a second. 
So after a happy 40 minutes of uh, snipping soldering, we've got all of the arms together. So this is what they actually look like. Let me just unwrap this one and try to keep it as neat as possible so you can see where we are. Uh, so what we have is the speed controller kind of directly connected to the motors. Now you have to be very careful with this. At the moment I'm using my Weller soldering iron with a nice big tip to try and get the heat into the joints and also then get the heat away from the joints nice and quickly using a good quality soldering iron and good quality solder and a steady hand is going to allow you to do that. Now, I won't know if that I've accidentally managed to damage anything uh, because everything is so close to each other here with the heat that we've been using with the soldering iron. We're gonna have to kind of hopefully keep our fingers crossed and that's gonna all work when we get that bit. So the next thing we need to do then is we need to start actually connecting all these wires up. Now from each of these ESCs, we have a positive and a negative wire, and these are going to have to go to the positive pads. We're gonna make this the front of the quadcopter, and all of the positive pads are here at the front, the negative pads at the back. Now we also have to connect a battery connector. Now this is the one that comes in the kit. It's pretty heavy, but I think it's gonna work. So I'm going to first of all uh, solder this battery connector onto the middle of these five pads and then just work my way around connecting each of these ESCs on to the positive and negative pads. I'm going to use a little bit of flux on each of those. The only other thing that I'll do is I'm going to wire this is a little spare bit of a servo cable. The black and red wires I'm going to connect to the ground and plus five volts here on the side of the power distribution board because that is ultimately going to power the flight controller. So again, let me do that and we'll come back and we'll have a look and then it'll be time for a quick test to make sure there's no magic smoke and we'll almost be at the end of this video. So after a happy half hour of clipping, tinning and soldering, it is all together. Now, hopefully you can see here that we've managed to keep it relatively low profile. If I put the flight controller on the top, all the way around, but you can see why we needed that space because it's getting a bit busy down there. And also potentially we're going to run a couple of these signals cables underneath too. Now, the way I did this is first of all, I uh, just put on the largest piece first because we had to route the cables around that was this XT60 plus and then very carefully one by one routed each of the cables from the ESCs all the reds up to the front of the board which is just happens to be the way this power distribution board is set up and all the negatives to the back which you can't see because it's actually under a lot of the reds that are doing took a little bit of time to figure it out and uh, just double check that you have a process for doing this but it's relatively neat uh, luckily it's going to be uh, kept out the way by that the only other thing that i have done is here on one of the sets of five ground five volt and ground pads I've put this extra little wire here. That's going to go up to the top of the flight controller and plug into this one of the spare PWM inputs to provide the power as well. So that is all of the main power systems done. The only last thing I'll just point out here is I have routed the cables differently in the front to back. The reason I've done that is because I do want to add a little buzzer to this machine. I've designed and 3D printed this little cover for these buzzers. Uh, you can buy these pizza electric buzzers from loads of different places. Um, I put them on most craft. They're great as a lost model alarm, but because this thing is so small, it's tricky to put it on. So I've popped this thing on Thingiverse. Now what I've done here is designed it so it's gonna push on the front and the cables are rooted in a way that hopefully this is gonna fit on and uh, not obstruct the cables in any way. So join me in the next video where what we're going to do is we're going to actually put the flight controller on the top and we're going to start wiring this thing up. We'll wire the buzzer up and we'll also wire all of the signal cables from each of the ESCs and we'll also do the power lead as well. Once that is done, then uh, we'll also look at how we're going to connect up the receiver and then... Once we finish that video, the next one is making the model on a radio. We're going to use a Tyrannus in this series and uh, how then you set everything up in Betaflight. So join us for the next video in the series where we're going to connect all the signals.
Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.